Hey everyone, welcome back to the uh, Rocket League Let's Build. This is part two. In the first part, uh, we programmed this rocket car. We did left and right acceleration uh, and double jumping. And now we're gonna work on how to knock this ball around and use physics to make it look realistic. Um, so the first thing we need to do for our physics is create three variables. Um, and this is all inside of the ball. We're going to go ahead and for the sprite only, we're going to make a gravity. So the ball's going to have its own gravity. I'm also going to make sure I don't spell it with weird capitalization. <laughs> I'm going to spell it like that. And then we're going to have x speed for the sprite only, which will control the speed left and right, and y speed, which will control the speed up and down for the ball. Now, much like any other sprite in my games, I like to use the one green flag clicked, and I'm going to set these three variables. So set, 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 and I'm going to set my gravity to minus 0.5. Uh, that way the ball will float a little bit. I think when we use this gravity number later, if you use minus one, it's a little too fast. Uh, minus 0.5 is pretty good. We can change that to any negative number of your liking. Um, then we can go for uh, X speed. And I like to move the ball a little bit at the start. So I just want to give it two speed to the right. And lastly is Y speed will say zero because we want to, uh, we don't really want to do anything in the beginning uh, up and down. Although you could make it pop up in the air at the start if you'd like. Uh, but we're going to sit, sit it here like this. Um, and the ball, I'm just going to place it in the middle. Okay, next we're going to uh, make sure the ball resets in the middle every time. We're just gonna do the go to X, Y block and we'll do zero, zero. Puts it right in the middle. There we go. Uh, so now it's just sitting there, but not, not doing anything. Uh, we have to let this ball move around. And after we have all this set up here, I like to use the forever loop which is the loop that it will be using through its whole uh, lifespan, pretty much. Um, next, let's focus on the gravity portion of the ball. We're gonna get that working first. We're gonna say if, if we are not touching the floor, because I have a floor sprite here, if we're not touching the floor sprite, we want to uh, move downwards. As long, if we're not touching the floor, move us downwards. And the way we move down is saying change y speed by our gravity number. So it'd be like neg so it's basically saying change the speed of our y to negative 0 0.5 or by negative 0 0.5. Meaning the longer it's in the air, the faster it'll move down. Now this doesn't actually move it down yet, as you can see. Uh, the ball speed, as you can see, it starts at zero. It's hard to tell, but it goes down very quickly and it's basically trying to push this ball downwards. Um, but we haven't assigned this Y speed to anything to do with the movement of the ball. We're going to do that now uh, with motion. And we're going to say change Y by whatever our Y speed happens to be. And now let's take a look at this. And it speeds up as we go. Perfect. Um, next, let's work on our left and right movement of the ball. So after Y speed is changed, we're going to change our X speed. Um, and I'll show you a little trick here. Change X by X speed. So this would be great if the ball was like on ice and just would never stop. But that's not realistic. What's realistic is if the ball slows down over time. And the way, the way we can do that is with math, we can say whatever that speed is, make it a little slower than it was on the previous loop. So it loops here. Then we're going to say X speed. I want you to get a little bit slower. Then a little bit slower and a little bit slower every single time this loops. And I'm going to grab uh, X speed and just multiply it by 0 0.98. Uh, 98 or 99 or 97, something around there, uh, means it'll slow down just a little bit. Um, basically saying like 
of the speed it, um, you know, change by that much. So that works by saying set, uh, you could do this after or before, it doesn't really matter. Set x speed to whatever the x speed is currently times 0 0.98, which will mean it will slow down. As you can see, it slows down to mostly a stop. There you go. <laughs> Perfect. That's what I want. So far, so good. Now I need it to collide with the walls. So importantly, the floor. Um, most importantly, the floor. So let's start with that one. My collisions I'm going to put in a completely separate thread because this uh, they might interrupt some of the code going on over here. A new, uh, maybe not a new thread, they might call it a new um, code block. So when green flag clicked, and then we need forever because these things should always be able to happen. If, if we are touching the floor, so if we're touching the floor, we want this thing to bounce. And a bounce is basically just setting its speed to reverse. So the way I can do that, I know the floor is an up and down speed, so I can say set y speed to, I can do two ways. I can say minus y speed like this. This is a fancy little way to do minus of a number or an opposite of a number. Um, and that works, but you can see it bounces the same height every time. I'm gonna use that same little physics trick I did before. And I'm going to actually say y speed is going to be set to y speed times negative uh, 0.98. So that means every time it bounces, well actually that's way too high, uh, let's do 0.8. Every time it bounces it will get 80% the height of the previous one. So as you can see, that's pretty pretty realistic, right? If you wanted it to bounce like a bowling ball, you could do minus 0 0.1. <laughs> uh, so that's kind of funny. You could do minus 0 0.5, and that would be kind of like a, maybe a, a wiffle ball. Then we can also do, you can do minus 0 0.9, that would be mostly bouncy. Um, but I like 0 0.8, that seems to me like a good uh, bounce amount for Rocket League. Like that looks kind of like how it would be in the game. Okay, now we have the floor done, but the ball will go through the right and left walls. We can fix that with some more if statements. Two of them, of course. Uh, we'll start with one though, and I'll probably just duplicate it. Uh, if touching the right wall, I want to bounce the left. So I'm going to say set x speed to the same thing here. We're going to set it with a multiplier. Um, set it to the current x speed minus 0 0.8. It's just like this, but for x, because x is left and right. I'm going to duplicate that, and instead of right wall, I'll do left wall. I suppose I could say, um, okay, um, to test this, I need to make the ball move to the right a little bit faster. Let's do 10. Oh, well, 40, why not? <laughs> okay, there we go. So it did glitch out there. As you can see, it got stuck on a wall. Now, for collisions, you many, many times want to prevent the ball from colliding twice like this, like it'll collide and then try and bounce out, but it can't quite reach it and it thinks it's still colliding and then it'll reverse again and reverse and just get glitch uh, back and forth on the wall. To prevent that, we need to use wait until blocks on all of our collisions. If you collide, you reverse the speed and then we won't allow any other collisions until we are no longer touching the object we just collided with. So we're going to wait until not touching the floor. And we're going to wait until we're not touching the right wall. We're going to wait until we're not touching the left wall. And you'll see that this that glitch will no longer happen uh, because the ball will disallow collisions until it's outside of um, a wall or a floor. Until it's no longer touching them, I should say. Okay. 
pretty good. <laughs> I think this is, if you want the ball to bounce up in the air a little bit, the start, it looks pretty realistic, right? Um, I'm gonna reset these back to zero and zero, and you'll notice the ball will just drop straight down. Perfect. Everything's working out. The only problem I have is my car does not interact with it. And we are gonna create that code now. It's not a lot of code blocks, but it is a lot of math, a lot of operators. And I'm gonna put this in a new section because it's, um, I don't want it to interrupt any of these collisions. I don't want it to interrupt any of this gravity stuff. I want it to sort of act on its own. So we need a new thread of code here. And you'll learn as you use, uh, make more games, like when you need to create a new block of code versus when you can just stuff everything into the forever loop. If touching the rocket car. Well, that's the collision, right? And to get ahead of things, um, we can say, we can grab one of these wait until not touching blocks because I'm gonna need it eventually. So we're gonna, if you touch the rocket car, we're gonna run the code, the physics code here. And then we're gonna say, you know, you're not allowed to touch the rocket car until you're not touching it. <laughs> so, meaning the ball won't go through you and then uh, glitch back and forth. So, let's get this math. So every time we make a collision, the ball needs to be adjusted. It's X speed and Y speed. So we're gonna set the X speed and the Y speed to different amounts. Now, let's get some math going. If the rocket car is moving really fast, like super fast, and it hits the ball, the ball should also go super fast. The way we can do that in Scratch is using a sensing block that's very, uh, very useful, but sometimes tricky to use, and it's, I can't, I don't even know what it's called really, um, but you can grab other variables or information from other blocks with these uh, from sensing. So from the rocket car, I can grab the X speed and the Y speed, because in the last project, we, we know that the X speed and Y speed is how we control the car's uh, movement. Um, let's start with figuring out the direction of the ball. So if your speed is going this way and you hit the ball, it should also go that way. So we're gonna say, uh, we need some minus blocks here. And we need to say X position and Y position. So the current X position minus X position of the car. So we're saying you need to move according to the X position of the car. So if our ball is to the right and it gets hit, it should bounce to the right. Meaning the X position of this would be like um, 50 and the ball would be 60. So that means the speed would be a 10. If we subtract those two, the 10 and 10 is to the right. It should bounce this way. The ball is behind the car and the car is moving backwards. That means the car is at about 60. Uh, the ball would be about 50. So let's do that math here. The ball is at 50. So 50 minus 60 is minus 10, which if you had a minus 10 speed, the ball would go this way. So if I collide on that side, it should go this way, that side, etc. So that's why we use subtraction there. Um, now we have to influence the ball with our um, speeds of the car. So it just, it'll move to the right or the left, but we also want to increase it based on the speed of the car. And we're going to do that with some mm, addition. So I'm going to carefully move these blocks around. They get pretty tricky sometimes, or pretty long and difficult to move. We'll say plus the X speed of the car there. Oh, I forgot one block here. Same idea for Y position. See, this is so tricky. There's just so many blocks that are inside of each other. Uh, plus the Y speed of the car. And we are gonna test that now. This might be a little extreme, so we may have to uh, multiple, uh, divide that number a bit or um, decrease it with a multiplier. Yep, <laughs> it's a little too fast, as you can see. So I'm gonna smash into it. Yeah, <laughs> it's so fast that it just like goes through the floor. Uh, so let's fix that. 
I can take these, this entire value and I can make it a little less extreme by multiplying it by maybe like 0.4. So it'll be 40% of the speed that I just saw. I'll do the exact same thing here, 0.4. <laughs> it's hard to do this sometimes. There we go. So I'm multiplying by 0.4. There we go. I can zoom out a little bit. So this should work. There we go. And you can see the ball will move according to where I'm hitting it with my car. So if I'm going to go to the right. Oh no, it went through the floor. I may have messed something up here. I don't know why I went through the floor, but we'll see. As you can see, this is pretty, pretty good. Um, I like it. It works, works pretty well right now. I think from here you can do stuff like create a little goal. Um, on the right side here, you can make a goal that you can knock the ball into uh, to, for scoring. You can also create an opponent player, um, replicate some of that coding. Let's see why it goes through the floor. Okay, so I fixed that small glitch. I think all I needed to do was uh, give the ball a little bit of help every time it made a collision. I think it, if it was going too fast, it would um, go through these walls and then kind of glitch out. So what I did was I just gave it a little help. So if it touches the floor, I'll change its Y by five. Makes it bounce a bit, but um, the right wall and the left wall, I gave it a little bit of help, help as well. So it kind of bounces off of them. Um, a little bit extra. All right, there it is. That's the Rocket League part two, let's build. Uh, so you can go ahead and try this out. You can remix it, add some more code if you'd like. Uh, thank you for watching. Of course, please uh, you know, visit digitaladventures.com. You can like and subscribe to these videos and maybe check out some of the other ones, uh, some of the Fall Guys or some of the Among Us uh, tutorials as well. Thank you.